sometimes when I'm working on a scene, I can't help but feel that it's a bit empty or lacking in atmosphere. And one nice little trick to help with that is to add ambient particles. For static animated shots, it also adds some subtle movements in the scene to make it more interesting. And for moving shots, it can add some extra depth to make the scene feel more grand and large scale. Before geometry nodes, the way I would do it was to add an icosphere and add a rigid body to it. I would then fill the space with it by applying some array modifiers and separate each object in edit mode. Then set the origin of each object to its geometry, add some forces, bake a simulation. Oh, I forgot to turn off gravity. Bake the simulation again, realize it's too slow or too fast, or the particles are too big or too close, scale, reposition, bake, fiddle with settings, and so on. Now, however, Geometry Nodes provides a much simpler way to do it, so let me show you how. Add a plane, or any other mesh. Then add a Geometry Nodes modifier to it. First, add a grid. This will be used as the base for scattering points, and its size and vertex count will affect the final distribution. Add an instance on points node, and a mesh line and connect it to the instance socket. The offset and count values of the mesh line will also affect the final distribution. For this example, I will set the size x and y as well as vertices x and y to 20. And for the mesh line, I will use a count of 20 and an offset of 1 on the z-axis. This creates a space that is 20 by 20 by 20 meters and contains 20 cubed, or 8000, particles all evenly spaced by 1 meter. Trippy. Next, let's delete some of the points so that it doesn't look as artificial. Add a Realize Instances node, a Delete Geometry node, and a Random Value node set to Boolean, and connect the Random Value node to the Selection input. This way you can control the amount of points being deleted with the Probability slider. And you can change the seed value to get different distributions. I will set the probability to 0.8. Next, let's add some movement to the particles. But first, let's instance the actual particles so it's easier to see what's going on. Add an instance on points node, an icosphere, and a random value node. Connect the icosphere to the instance socket and set the radius to something small, like 0.075. Then, connect the random value node to the scale socket, and set the min value to something like 0.1. Though these values is something that you have to experiment with yourself, depending on the scale of the scene. To add movement, I will use a noise texture to displace each point over time. Add a set position node, a map range node set to vector, a noise texture, and a scene time node. Connect the color output to the vector input of the map range node, and set the two min values to negative one. Then connect it to the offset input of the set position node. To add some semi-random movement, you can set the noise texture to 4D, and connect the seconds output to the W input. And to make the movement less hectic, lower the scale and detail of the noise texture, and add a math node set to multiply after the scene time node. and set the multiply value to something like 0.1. Also, if you want bigger movements, adjust the two min and two max values. For example, since I set the dimensions of the particle space to 20 by 20 by 20, setting the two min to negative 20 and two max to 20 means that each point can move to any other point within this space.
though you will have to adjust the seconds multiplier accordingly. As a final touch, you can also add a directional movement on top of the random movement to simulate a light breeze for example. To do this, add another set position node, another scene time node, a combined XYZ node, and a math node set to multiply. Connect the seconds output to the math node, and set the multiply value to something like 0 0.25. This value is essentially the directional speed. Then, connect the math node to the axis of the combined XYZ node that you want the directional movement to be aligned to, the x-axis in my case. Then connect that node to the offset input. And that's about it. What's nice about a setup like this is that you essentially have full control of the parameters of the system in real time. It also allows you to use whatever mesh you want as the particles. Here for example, I'm using a Suzanne mesh with some added rotation in the particle setup. So majestic. I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.